Today's patient is a 68-year-old male with a failing tooth number 9. This tooth has previously been treated with endodontic therapy followed by multiple apicoectomies over the years. One can see the amalgam tattoo from previous apicoectomies years ago. The patient presented with a feeling of difference in his upper front tooth around the gingiva. Upon examining the gingiva, it was noted that there was a loss of stippling. When the area was probed, significant probing depth was recorded. A CT scan was taken and implant planning proceeded. The lab made both a flipper and a provisional crown in the event there was such significant bone loss that initial stabilization of the implant could not be achieved. A sulcular incision was begun over number eight, which extended over number nine and then moved on to a non-aesthetic zone. A vertical incision was made distal to the cuspid, avoiding the papilla between 11 and 12. A full thickness flap was elevated. It was started using the point tip of a Woodson plastic filling instrument. In the area over the central incisors, sharp dissection was needed as there is extensive soft tissue. Here we continue to raise the flap. A salvum peritone was used to luxate number nine. No movement was detected, so a high speed was used to create interproximal space, which would allow rotation of the tooth facilitating the removal. This would also help separate the root of the tooth from the buccal plate bone, thus preserving the buccal plate. A 65 maxillar forceps was used and the tooth was successfully removed. Upon examining the extraction site, a large degree of apical pathology was present and there was significant bone loss on the labial. In fact, there was just a small isthmus of bone going from number eight to number nine. Megagen drilling protocol was initiated with an emphasis on keeping the osteotomy palatal to the apical location. You'll see a drill left in place used to evaluate the opposing occlusion and make sure there was clearance for the implant. A Megagen any ridge implant was picked up with the handpiece and placed into the osteotomy. The placement went smoothly and the implant was placed three millimeters apical to the adjacent CEJ. Megagen fuse abutments, which are used for provisionalization, were evaluated as to which configuration would suit the situation. Three angulations, 0, 15, and 25 degrees were evaluated and the one that allowed the greatest freedom of occlusion was chosen. After the fuse abutment was seated, the inner cap was placed over the abutment and trimmed appropriately to allow placement of the provisional restoration. Decortization was proceeded with a 557 high-speed bird that would later help facilitate and promote bone grafting. Acrylic was mixed and the lab manufactured provisional was seated into place. Care was taken to control the flow of the acrylic. Once the acrylic was set, the cap that was prepared on top of the abutment was attached to the provisional. The provisional was then trimmed and polished. Quick set acrylic was used. Occlusion was then verified, centric and working interference were freed, making sure there was no functional contact. Temporary cement was placed inside the provisional and was seated into place. This was all done before bone grafting and final suturing. Demineralized freeze-dried cortical cancellous bone graft was used. Not only did the bone graft fill the defect, but it bulked out the tissue and filled the void between the implant and the buccal plate of bone. A resorbable collagen membrane was placed over the graft and the tissue was approximated for suturing.
Foral Vicryl was used to reposition the tissue, first starting with a sling suture that would allow the coronal positioning of the gingival tissue. It is important to remember when using a sling suture, the only pass-through that is performed is through the buccal or facial tissue on either side of the tooth in question. There is no penetration of the palatal tissue. The suture is tied off and when this occurs, the gingival tissue is in the appropriate coronal position. Post-op radiograph showed excellent position of the Megagen anti-ridge implant. Due to the labial position of the lower anterior tooth, the actual position of the provisional had to be more labial than ideal to avoid any type of functional or non-functional contact. Thank you and visit us at our website listed here or at Dental Implant Trainers on social media.